Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time, and today I'm coming to you from Frenchman Mountain, just east of Las Vegas, Nevada, which you can see off in the distance. And today I'm coming up here to show you a really unique place, one of the most unique places in the entire world, and that is what is known as the Great Unconformity. So, join me today. Let's take a look at the Great Unconformity here at Frenchman Mountains, just outside Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's get to it. Before we explore the site anymore, let's talk a bit about unconformities. So what is an unconformity? An unconformity is just a gap in the geologic record, either due to erosion or non-deposition of rock. Now there's kind of three main types of unconformities that are most often talked about, and those are disconformities. And a disconformity is where there's been deposition but then erosion at some point, and then there's further deposition on top. There are non-conformities, which is where you have igneous or metamorphic rock deposit first, and then you have sedimentary rock on top, and there's some missing time between those two. And then the last one we'll talk about are angular unconformities, and that's where sediments have been deposited and then rotated somehow through some kind of usually tectonic forces, like things like faults. And what happens is then they get rotated, they get planed off through erosion, and there's deposition on top of them. So all these represent ways where there's missing geologic time. Now, there's one other one I'll mention, and it's a para-unconformity. And that's basically where your sediments are deposited all horizontally, but maybe there's non-deposition in between. And those are a lot harder to recognize in a geologic record without further work. Things like looking at micro fossils to give you an idea about what kind of time has been missing or if there's material available to date you can get the dates between to figure out how much time is missing but that's a much tougher one okay let's get back to the great unconformity in las vegas nevada so now that we've reviewed types of unconformities let's talk about why this is called the the great unconformity and why it's so important and why this site on frenchman mountain is so unique the rocks that are down behind me are what are known as gneiss. So it's a type of metamorphic rock. And these have been dated to about, at their youngest, about 1.6, 1.7 billion, with a B, years old. Now, how do they know that? Well, they can do what they call age dating or radiometric dating. And what they can do with that is they understand how long it takes certain radioactive materials to decompose. And they look at those ratios and they know how long it takes to happen. And so they can get an idea of how much of the original material versus the new materials left due to that process and get an idea about the age. And in this case, we're talking about 1.6, 1.7 billion year old rocks that are sitting just below me. However, the ridge I'm actually standing on is made up of sandstone, and this sandstone is known as the Tapete Sandstone, and it's Cambrian in age, Cambrian being the earliest time period from the Paleozoic. And this time period, these rocks are somewhere roughly around 500 million years old. So that means somewhere between where I'm standing on these sandstones and looking out to these nice or metamorphic rocks over here, there is somewhere around 1.2 to 1.1 billion years of time missing. And that's why it's called the Great Unconformity. And this spot is the best place in the entire world to see a large unconformity like that, and specifically one that's well known in literature. A lot of people travel to places like the bottom of the Grand Canyon to see this same unconformity. However, I can just come up the road. You can actually see there's just town right there. I can come up this drive, Lake Mead Drive, for those of you in the Las Vegas area visit here, and come here and put my hand, putting my hand on the Great Unconformity. Amazing. So now that we've looked at that contact, let's look at this 1.6 to 1.7 billion year old rock and see what it is composed of. And right away, we can see it's what they call a gneiss. So basically it's an igneous rock, something like a granite that has been transformed because it was under high heat and pressure. And it becomes what we call a gneiss. And jokingly, we always say, hey, isn't that a nice rock? The other thing we can see here are these nice 
planes coming through, and these are fracture and or fault planes. However, it's hard to tell with this material how much movement has occurred, if any. Now let's look at the other side at the Cambrian to Peets formation. So this is a sandstone. We can see some cross beds coming through in here, which tells me it's most likely from some kind of shoreline type deposit because these are long form cross beds. So you can see a nice example of one. In fact, I'll put my hand here at the base and we can see this cross bed coming through here. If I break a piece off, you can see it's pretty light in color. There is a lot of staining here, and you can see this is iron staining or manganese staining that's occurring along these rocks, which is pretty common with the rocks here in the Basin Range. You get a lot of water flowing through these rocks, especially if they're close to a fault zone. I haven't worked this area as much, and I've never really worked the Cambrian. That's just a, a time period as a geologist I haven't spent a lot of time in, so I'm really excited to see some of this and learn, and specifically to see the Great Unconformity, which every geoscientist, earth scientist, learns about this place from the time they take their first geologic class. Pretty awe-inspiring to be standing here along such a famous place. I walked down the hill a bit and you can see here's the nice and right there is the Tapit Sandstone. So a distance of less than a yard. As I look a little closer you can see where they're in contact there's actually this interesting weathering pattern happening right where the two intersect. Now all of this over a billion year old rock doesn't look the exact same. So here you can look at the gneiss again in a different kind of form. You can see it's beaten up, it's more fine grained and immediately adjacent to that you can see where this what we call a pegmatite dike, this really coarse material came through. So we can look at the contact between this pegmatitic dike, so it's got very coarse grains. Um, it still looks like it's been metamorphosed as well. Along the way, you can see there's some fractures. We can see quartz in here. I can see some, some orthoclase in there. And then if I look over just to the left, I can see I have some much finer material that was probably once granite or something maybe even a little bit finer. And now it's been totally metamorphosed and you can see these nice sparkly tops to it because it has a lot of things like mica that are part of it and this is really more of almost a schist by the time it gets to this kind of grade so you go from some kind of nice pegmatitic dike material to some kind of nice and schist combination here really fascinating to look at these old rocks and and the fact that they're juxtaposed within feet of each other <laughs> from here to the Tapit Sandstone is still mind-boggling to me, knowing that there's 1.2 billion years of history that are gone from this path that I'm actually walking up. So interestingly enough, this path follows that contact pretty well, which tells me it's a, a easy spot for erosion to occur. Now, it could be that there's water that went through there. It could be that there's other things that happened as this older rock, the gneiss and the metamorphic rocks were weathered and exposed, maybe had a weaker zone there. But a lot of times where you have these differences, especially drastic differences in these rock types, those can be conduits for things like fluids, which means you're going to have some alteration and create some kind of zone of weakness potentially along that area. Thank you all for joining me today to check out the Great Unconformity, a place where 1.1 to 1.2 billion years of Earth's history are missing from this area. Now, one caveat I'll say is that those layers do exist in other parts of the world, so we are able to put together the story of what is missing here. But at this spot, that tells me there's a lot of erosion or a lot of non-deposition here for a huge chunk of time. Over twice as much that's actually then represented that we can see going from the Tapit Sandstone all the way to modern day.
really hard to wrap your mind around, even as a geologist, really hard to wrap my mind around how much time is missing here compared to how much time we have represented in all the rocks that we have here. I hope you learned something with me today. I sure learned a lot. I was so excited to come to this spot. This has been a bucket list item for me since I took my first Geology 101 class over 20 years ago. So super excited about coming here. Thank you for sharing this experience with me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave comments down below. Are there amazing geologic sites where you live or is there somewhere you've always wanted to visit? A national park, a state park, some rock formation somewhere. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate having you all join me on all these adventures. So with that being said, everybody take care. Thank you and see you on the next adventure. Just because I have to do this 500 million year old rocks, take one step, whoop, billion year old rocks. How cool is that? Billion, 500 million. Billion, 500 million. Pretty awesome. And my geology partner in crime today, Batman. <laughs>